Yo, yo, what it do? Y'all know what it is. It's your boy, the real Jarrell. Yo. What's good, YouTube? It's been a minute since I've been on. Been dealing with some personal legal issues. I'm not going to get into the uh, exact details. Oh, that's my business. I don't get on here and spread my business. But I figure I come on here because I still got subscribers and I got people that rock with me. So I'm gonna come on here and talk to y'all. There's some interesting things going on since I've been away. A lot of things been happening. And the one thing that's been on my mind is this YNW Melly thing. I believe this boy done killed these people. Now, some of y'all might take but what evidence do you have there? The court ain't really proving nothing. Well, we could be wrong, boys and girls. We could be wrong. Maybe the court do know something we don't know. So, I mean, if it was a drive-by, Well, let's think about the little say there. The night Tupac got killed. Shug Knight didn't catch all the bullets, right? But he got graves. So if it's a drive-by, ain't no way in, the, ain't no way in hell. There's no way, there's no way in hell. Somebody can get graves hit. Bullet hole and go through somebody's jacket. They just got the majority of the bullets coming from the opposite direction. Now that's what they say now. What them people trying to say. Them people trying to say the bullets didn't come from where they said the drive-by supposedly happened on the side the drive-by supposedly happened on. The bullets came from the opposite direction. The bullets came from the back pass, I mean the back driver's side. You did? This white boy Aaron, what is he doing over here? White boy. But, anywho. It came from this way. I like him. Okay. I like somebody sitting behind me Right? Shooting in the passenger seat. This way. That's what he said. The bullets went this way, in this direction. Instead of coming in this direction. Right? Because the driver should have had some kind of debris, glass, or something. Because if I'm doing a drive by, the bullets are going to come here, maybe here, through the door somewhere like in this region. So I'm gonna get hit in the leg, I'm gonna get grazed, I'm gonna get some glass on me. Who you knows something is going to happen, you know what I'm saying? And for them dudes not to get a scratch on them, nothing? Says a lot. Now, they could be the other way around. Maybe the guy who was driving was probably one sitting in the back. And maybe Melly was driving. You know, but I can't see him putting himself in this if he got caught. Like, they get caught. I can't see him saying, well, I'm going to take the rap. He's a, you know, he's a, he want to be the star. So I don't think the star would want to, you know, his homie would more so. But I don't know. You know, it could be, but we don't know. But I'm going to play something for y'all. And I want y'all to listen to this. Now, I don't know if people are seeing this. I know this is, I think this might be an old clip or somebody might have reposted it. I'm not sure if it's new, but I think I've heard this before. I'm not sure. Maybe some of y'all have, but let me get to the point. This is why YNW Juvie's father, the victim that was shot, supposedly, allegedly shot by YNW Melly. This is his father speaking. Now, you're going to hear this and then you're going to say, damn, what have I youth come to in 20, 
in 2018, 2019, 2022, 2023, in the late 2000s, what have our young people come to after you see this video? Because, I mean, after you hear this video, I'm sorry, after you hear this video, because you're going to be like, well, damn. You're going to come find out all these dudes like family and friends, man. And I've been saying it. I heard this in my last video some months ago. All these dudes that's beefing know each other. Somehow, they all connected. You know, I haven't seen a beef or a war in a long time where two people really don't know each other. One just know he wants to take over this territory and the other one know he wants to take over that territory. I haven't seen that in years. It's not like that anymore. Well, I'm going to take this over and I'm going to go get them out the way. Everybody knowing each other and everybody started growing up becoming me and started saying, well, what happens is what I paid attention to in BMF, you know, if you don't feed the homies, if you don't take care of people, man, bruh, folks will turn on you. You go to jail, anything. Folks want your position. They want your power. This is why all this come in there, guys. We all friends. I go to jail. You take over, but you get all the power, all this. Your head swelled up. I come home. I need a piece of the pie. So I didn't did my time. I ain't right. I ain't say nothing. I kept it to myself. You know, I ain't told a Sally or nothing. I come home. You want to tell me you ain't giving me nothing. Or you want to tell me, oh, I got to stand on this corner. Or I got to do some low-level stuff to get back to where I was at because now you in charge and you feel like well I've been putting in work all these years while you've been behind bars so I deserve this I get that but you got to remember we built this together well I might have built this and you might you know assist it or have it go you know what I'm saying but for one thing you know I I can't let my empire go oh I can't there's traffic over here I can't let my empire go because of uh, something, you know, you own. And that's when egos kick in. It's my ego kicking in, right? You know what I'm saying? I, I mean, I built this. I can't let this go, you know? And then I got some people that's willing to follow me. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, man, because when you was out, you know, and then you got some people who got their own agendas and they're going to rock with you till they get what they want. They're going to pump, yeah, man, you know, man, when you was out here, you was doing this, man. We was eating. Everything was good. And there are some genuine people who, who might love you. You know what I'm saying? Who might say, man, when you was here, everything was smooth. Everybody was getting paid. No shorts, no losses. Now we're taking losses, shorts, this going on, that going on. But some people might be like, man, I'm going to use folks. This is an opportunity to get uh, what I want. You know what I'm saying? So this is what we're dealing with. You know, but uh, anywho. I don't even know them. I'm going to get to the stuff. Stop talking. I'm going to give y'all what y'all want to hear. That's Christopher Thomas, known as YNW Juvie. The man accused of murdering him, YNW Melly, is on trial, accused of killing another man, too. Juvie's dad is here with his story. I'm Ann Jeanette Levy, and welcome to Law & Crime's Sidebar Podcast. Testimony is underway in the trial of Jamel Demons, known by his stage name YNW Melly. Melly is accused of murdering two members of his group, Chris Thomas, who went by YNW Juvie, and Anthony Williams, who was known as YNW Sack Chaser. The men were shot to death in an SUV after leaving a late-night recording session on October 26, 2018 with Melly and another group member, Cortland Henry, who went by YNW Bortland. Bortland was driving the SUV. Later that morning, Bortland showed up at the hospital. Juvie and Sack Chaser were dead in the car. Melly was not with them. Chris, first of all, I know this has been a difficult uh, almost five years now. How are you? So, if it's a drive-by, if you in the car, with the person that the drive-by supposedly happened, where did you go? So you just 
The drive-by happened. Hey, man, go take them to the hospital. I'm gone. These are your homies. When you go with them, all I'm saying. Doing right now with this trial finally starting. Uh, it's it's kind of overwhelming at times, but doing the best I can at the moment. A lot of people may not know a lot about your son. What do you want people to know about him? I, we know he was, you know, an aspiring rapper. He was part of this YNW group. Chris was a good kid. Um, he's the second of my oldest boys. He's the oldest of his mom kids. And he loved his whole family. He loved That's YNW Juvie's father speaking. With all his friends. And he just got caught up for being too loyal and got betrayed by one of his so-called friends. A sad situation for everybody. Tell me a little bit about that because, you know, it's my understanding that Juvie was friends with Melly and Sack Chaser uh, for quite some time. Tell me, when when did you first come to know Melly? I met Melly around like 99. When you imagine day-to-day -day life in a prison, you probably think yeah, of it I know as you too. But at the Federal Bureau of- Around like 99, like a couple years before Chris met him, uh, I was friends with uh, his, with his, his Melly's mom, best friend at the time. And that's how I got to know Melly. Then Chris got to know him after that. You hear that? So he was messing with Melly's mom friend, right? A, you know what I'm saying? Come on, man. Let, let, let's make this make sense, y'all. Come on, let's make this make sense. See, this is what I'm saying. How how is we? Well, you got blood family members killing each other, so of course you gonna have these, you know, play family members, so called. You know what I'm saying? We cousins type of thing. You know, they they. they but anyway, I just still don't. I just still can't wrap my finger around how. Well. I think that's where the most crimes are probably committed is the people that, you know, most crimes are committed by people, by somebody you know, you know what I'm saying? By the people you know, most crimes are committed. Some, you know, are random, you know. But it makes sense though. You, but, you know, I must be a different type of dude because growing up, when I saw my friends do that, I didn't get into that. I didn't make a choice between which one I'ma hang out with, which side I'm on. I didn't pick sides, I didn't choose. You know, my thing is I stayed neutral. If anything, I did my own thing. I chose my own side. I'm like, well, if you don't get along with him and he don't get along with you, but I get along with both of y'all and I can't hang with both of y'all together, then hell, I, I might as well do my own thing. So this is how I, you get what I'm saying? This is how I became, this is, this is how I got out of the uh, out of the whole mess, the, out of the whole street mess, because I chose to do my own thing. Now, did they like it? No, they wanted me to be here over there. I said, I'm neither. I'm neither. I'm who I am. You niggas can't tell me. That's the problem. It's all about control, power. You know, who got the biggest squad? Who the toughest? Who the meanest? Now nah, we want you down on our squad. We want you. But I'm here to make money, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, okay, the squad thing, that's cool. But if you paying me squad money, I'd be part of the squad. But just to be part of something on my own merit and take losses and never win anything back in return, that ain't me. So, you know, I don't know, man. You know, I just never did that. So I stayed out of that. That's how I got to know Melly. Then Chris got to know him after that. He was, they was all good kids coming up, just laughing, playing, joking with each other, having fun. Like to hang out with each other. And he loved them boys and he loved them to a fault. So he was friends with them since they were little kids then, it sounds like. Yes, man, they went to elementary, middle school, high school, all together. That's how we, I know his mom as well. His stepdad and the rest of his family, Melly's family. And the music started, um, I think, um, around 2000, maybe 13. And they were just all making the music together? Yeah, 
just started from rapping at school to making meals together and coming up with the name, the one W, and it just went from there. And Zach and Chris and Melly were the, and even Jay Green was the all uh, founder members of the Wine W. Melly was just the face of it. I say now that Chris and Anthony is gone, now he just took everything over. Sounds like your son and the other guys had a lot of really big dreams. Yes, ma'am, they did. They loved music, they loved to perform, and they was on their way, like, to do big things, and it just got cut short. This tragedy. Everybody that's around still trying to pick up the pieces, like, a lot of families got broken in the situation. Melly is saying that he is innocent. His defense attorneys are saying the state can't prove its case. But it's my understanding you believed from the very beginning that Melly was responsible for your son's death and the death of Anthony. From the day one, I believed that Melly was responsible for my son's death on October 26th when I first heard the story. Because his explanation, when I finally talked to him in court on FaceTime, their response and how they was reacting, they showed no remorse. They didn't act like they was grieving, like they lost a best friend or nothing. They was in, in my opinion, they was in the best spirits. They never came to town, never came to, to my son's funeral, never came to sack funeral. And they your best friends. He passed straight through the county of Indian River, went to a bar and did a music video, but he couldn't even stop and pay his condolences to his best friend's mom. See, now Ain't this the same thing that Alpo did to Rich? He didn't come to the funeral. He came to the wake. Now, with all now, this is the difference, though. So I'm, I, you know, I know people are gonna be like, well, Alpo, blah 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 blah. But yeah, this is the difference between Alpo and well, this is the difference between the old and the new, right? I'm not saying by Alpo coming to the Rich's wake, you know what I'm saying was. Um, was a noble thing, um, but it was the right thing. It was because you did take this. Man, people say, "Well, that's evil. You kill somebody and come to their funeral." Yeah, but we don't know where that person's heart at. We're not sitting there talking to them and trying to see what their mentality is by showing up here. Now you saw it in Juice when Bishop showed up to Raheem's funeral. You know what I'm saying? Or you know the the, the uh, what they call that? It's not the wake. It's the repast. You know, when, they, when he showed up to the repast, you know, that's different. You know, we don't know if he was at the actual funeral, but we know he showed up to the repast. You know, some people do that. You know, you got them the real crazy ones, you know, the real psychotic ones. Where their heart is really black, but they go just to cover it up to make sure, you know, you don't suspect it's them. So what Alpo did, I believe there was some kind of guilt there. And he felt like he had to do that. That's why he didn't do it with everybody around. You know what I'm saying? For one, he probably knew if he came there, there somebody was gonna blow his head off right then and there probably. And for two, he also knew that they didn't want him there because everybody suspected he did it. You know what I'm saying? So, and everybody felt and knew he did it. So he felt probably like you know some some guilt there. He, you know he paid his respects basically. You know, I don't think it was out of disrespect. I think he paid his respects. Like I said, those reasons, there was some reasons why he couldn't be there with the rest of the public. You know, if the rest of the public didn't suspect him, didn't know if he did it or not or whatever, he probably would have showed up, you know what I'm saying? Probably just to cover it up, make it sound good or whatever, but he knew he couldn't do that because he knew what everybody else knew. So he, you know, taking that chance of coming there and getting dealt with. You get what I'm saying? So, so yeah. So, anyway, this boy, that's the first time right there, not coming to the funeral. You go shoot a music video, you don't even pay your respects. He didn't come to the wake. He didn't, they didn't say, man, he signed a book. He dropped some dough down. Nothing. Like, if you don't come to the funeral, at least go to the damn wake. At least go pay your respects. At least go say, hey man, we had fun, rest in peace. See you whenever. Or if I never see you, could this is goodbye forever, goodbye. Move on, man. You know what I'm saying? Not saying not, not trying to make it sound cruel or nothing, because he's the killer, but or if allegedly he's the killer, but I'm just saying. 
you know, if there was some kind of guilt there, if you really meant that in your heart to not do something like that, you will have some kind of remorse. It'll be some kind of guilt there. It'll be some kind, it'll be something, a conscience. Your conscience be eating you. Their conscience is not eating them. And, when you, and people can say, well, their conscience is not eating them because they didn't do it. No, their conscience is not eating them because they're evil. You know, if they didn't do it, they will be emotional. They will have some kind of emotion. They will cry. Or they'll be like, damn. If they will show something. If they, even if they don't cry, it'd be some kind of, you know, silence. Uh, you know, blackout or something. You'll do something. It's something you will do. You might not shed tears all day long, but you might not eat for a week. You might go shell shot. You might get super high. You don't even know your name no more. You're going to do something. You're going to grieve some kind of way put to you like that they didn't do that like he said he go shoot a music video you ain't come drop no bread down you ain't come come on man but we supposed to be my boy we supposed to be best friends we grew up since kids but there's a lot of kids that grew up together killing each other but let's continue let's dig a little deeper Bard, they did a music video but he couldn't even stop and pay his condolences to his best friend's mom he even got Janet tatted on his neck. That's why his defense attorney got him wearing turtle turtlenecks and shirts to hide his neck because he got Janet tatted on his neck. That's Sack Mom's name. And he got Chris' name and Sack name. And this guy, that guy is just, I have no words for that guy. What was it in particular that was said on that FaceTime that made you think that Millie was responsible? Nothing was said, actually, like the demeanor. It was like the body language, really. Like I was just reading them, and as I'm telling them, asking them questions, I got so emotional, I started crying. They didn't even, they wasn't reacting to it. With Spot Me, I can overdraft up to $200 fee free. Install the Chime app today. When you want junk to disappear, oh! Yes. Well, they hit you with these ads, boy. They ain't never used to be like this. They, they didn't to, even, they wasn't reacting to for that. They had like they didn't they didn't have to take a loss at all. That's how I that's how I took it. And then when I was talking to them, I still had Yeah, see I would be messed up. My man's them died and we finna get on. Yeah, I'd be like, man, that's effed up, man. We gotta we gotta do something, we gotta bounce back, we gotta do something. You know, let's go find the niggas that did it. This is the drive back, then why ain't nobody finding the niggas that did it? Why ain't nobody heard nothing? About no retaliation about this. If it's a drive-by, so it's just a mysterious drive-by out the blue. Y'all can't even say, hey man, yeah, we warring with a hood. Nah, we don't know who, but yeah, we in war with this hood. It could be anybody from over such and such. Y'all ain't even got something to do that. <laughs> you know, y'all just well, we ain't snitching, we ain't well, snitching on what there's nobody to snitch on when you did the crime. <laughs> what well, these young folks? But uh, let's continue. Oh man, it's, it's always something, boy. It's always something around here. You know what, man? I let, let me just say this, man. Let me just say this. In the black community, we always got some bull crap going on. Man, it's always something, man. Come on, man. Nothing works in our neighborhood. One thing green, other thing red. One thing say close, other thing say open. Man, y'all need to get this together. I'm tired of going all the way over in the white folks' neighborhood to use some stuff, man. I got to waste gas going all the way over there. And it's right here in my neighborhood, but it never works. Golly. Please, y'all. Can we do something about this? Can we fix the stuff in the black community? Can we get these ATMs working? Can we... Do something, God. Hey, tired of going all the way over there, man. And y'all know the suburbs in Illinois, man. They not right next door. I know some places just as further, but God, man, you got it right here. But anyway, let me. That's how I, that's how I took it. And then when I was talking to them, I still had in the back of my my mind that it, something's not right. Something's not right. Did they tell you anything about what they claimed happened with the the drive-by they claimed happened? No. They had absolutely no explanation. Like, we have to figure it out just like the police. 
Chris, why do you think that this happened? Why do you think, you know, Melly did this? Because, you know, Melly is on trial. The state has to prove it beyond a reasonable doubt that he committed these crimes. But why do you think this happened? Um, I think the story about the 200,000 with Anthony was a true story because it's not recorded, but Chris told me the same story and also the $500,000 play and Melly was going to get 200,000. Sack was going to get 200000 and Chris was going to get 100000 And as, as I'm hearing it from Chris, they was going to sell the YNW brand. Not a record deal or nothing like that. It was like for the, the brand itself. By them being founding members, they was going to get a piece of the pie. So I think, I don't I don't think Melly did it on his own. I think that manager guy got in his ear and did a little dividing company. Because if it was up to Sack, it would, know, it would never be a 100K management. They were going to sell the YNW name for licensing or to sell products? What do you mean they were yeah. going to sell the name? The marketing, licensing, and stuff like that. They didn't want to go up on the big umbrella just to push the thing, push the brand more global. That's what I'm thinking. And so you think that Melly wanted a bigger cut of that then? I think Melly didn't want to give them guys nothing. He wanted to be the only one to shine. And then they came to town the next day and gave uh, the and the mothers, 15000 the other, other 10000 So I, I thought to myself, if Sam was going to get 200000 Chris get 100000 if we could pay these people 25000 keep 275000 that's how I saw it. It, it. it just, nothing seemed, nothing added up. Melly still to this day to be him, to, for me to hear the, him call them boys his best friend is an insult. That's an insult. Was there any sign of bad blood? So, as you can see, everything is about a damn dollar. Everything is about a dollar. Come on, man. Y'all got the, come on, man. Black folks, come on, man. In my boosty voice, come on, Vlad. Come on, man. Don't cut his dick off, man. <laughs> But for real, man, come on, man. It's always, it's always about some money, bro. It's all, it's always about some money, always. That's why I be telling people, man. Shoot, man, when you got, man, you can be, man, if you broke. That's why they keep us broke. They keep us broke because they know they can get us to compromise our morals and values for, for bread, bro. They know we could do that. Keep them down so when we need them. We could put this bag in their face and they could sell a whole black community out. We've seen it time and time again. Judas, the was the Judas and the Black Messiah or something like that? What was the name of that movie? You know what I'm saying? With Fred Hampton and all that, man. We've seen it, man. Man got a gas station for Katrina Fred Hampton, bro. Hell. What they use? We'll keep you out of jail. We're going to keep you out of jail, nigga. But we need you to do this first. And on top of that, after you do this, man, you can have your own gas station. We're gonna make you a rich man. We're not gonna give you a bag, but we're gonna give you something so you can, we're gonna give you the tool so you can earn a bag. And you and your family can eat for life. We done seen it several times, y'all. That's why I'm never surprised about this stuff, man. It's like a repeat of everything over and over and over again. Same stuff over and over and over again. You know, they, they find a nigga down in his luck, third strike, broke, woman left him, divorced him, ain't got nothing. Then what they do? They find these kind of folks that ain't got nothing. And they say, hey man, well come on. We'll give you something. Just tell us what we want to hear. Tell us what we need to know. And it's all yours, man. What you need, man? You know, yeah, man, we know you live in the projects. 
We know you live here. We know you ain't got this. We know you're a three-time family. We know you're looking at 20 years. Your, your, uh, your kid gonna grow up without a father. Man, look, just tell her what we want to know, man. We'll put you in witness protection. We'll relocate you. We'll give you a bag. We'll do this for you. Just sell out your own folks. You know what I'm saying? Just sell them out. And I'm not talking about the criminal. That criminal world, that's a whole different thing. I'll be back. Okay, yeah, that criminal world, that's a different thing. You know, people, they compromise for stuff all the time in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in that world. I'm talking about far as people trying to do stuff for black people or all people, you know what I'm saying? You, you know, you always going to have that snitch that, you know, somebody's going to betray you for a dollar. You know, it happens overseas. It happens here. You know, so that's what I'm saying. I'm not surprised about any of these things, but... It is what it is, man. People betray you for the weirdest things, but money is mainly the, the main issue here. You know, it's it's sad, black folks and money, black folks and material don't mix, period. I ain't gonna just say money. Black folks and material don't mix, period. It just don't, guys. Why do we keep on getting with homies? And But see, that's because we're not taught right. We get with homies, and we don't see these signs that our homies got some kind of evilness about them or some kind of wickedness. You know what I'm saying? We don't see these signs. We think it's cool to hang out with them and, and do dirt with them. And you know what I'm saying? Well, I ain't telling that's my homie. But then your homie turn around and kill on you. Now, all this dirt you done did, you might have shot people, killed people, did some stuff for this nigga, and he turn around and blow your damn brains out. See, it happens like that. That's why I was never that stupid. You know what I'm saying? I thank God for the mama and, the, and her friends and the people that we had around us, you know what I'm saying? I thank God for those people. That's why I was never stupid, because I saw it. You know, my stepdaddy used to sell crack, you know what I'm saying? He used to be out here. So, I, you know, I used to see certain things. He kept things, he kept his work life and his private life separate from each other. See what I'm saying? He kept them separate, man. But this generation is not being taught that anymore. You know, why? Because what they see on TV, the images are being popularized. See, back then, my stepdad and them, they knew they couldn't do nothing like that because even if it was a social media, such thing as a social media back then, my stepdad and them would have been, in their era, would have been totally against it. Hell no, nah, you ain't even put this on no Instagram or no camera. I could see them. If them guys was now, I could see them now. Hell no, nah, we're not going to put that on no damn Instagram. We're not going to put no gang meetings, no shootings, none of that. On no damn Instagram and Facebook, they would not be going for that. Boy, if you did that, you would have got a, what they called a pumpkin head back then. You would have got one of them trying to record anything. Now they had cameras. They had the old school hold you, you know, like the the movies, you know, like the uh Hollywood, you know, they had the big old Hollywood cameras. They had cameras back then, but you weren't taking that shit to no game meeting. You know what I'm saying? You was not taking that to no drive by, no uh you you put a hit out on somebody, you're not gonna record no hit like these guys are doing you're not gonna get on there and talk nation business on no camera they was not having that back then so you if you look at some of these old vhs tapes that they post on youtube you don't you're not gonna find a vhs tape of a nigga talking about some illegal stuff unless it's by the feds 
you know what I'm saying? Or the police. That's the only way it's going to get put up and somebody might get access to it and able to get to it. But you're not going to, come on, man. You're not going to, these guys not posting that. They're not going to say, oh, well, this is this the game meeting we had in 78. So I'm going to post this so the public can see what it was like in 1978. Man, is you crazy? That's how you know them guys came up under a whole different belief than what we coming up in and believing. Them guys weren't trying to hear that. But yeah, we sell out each other for some money. Why? Because we could be compromised, guys. We can. They got us like that. That's not a that's that was by design. That was by design. Keep them broken down so whenever we need to get us a snitch, whenever we need somebody in the hood to tell on somebody, whenever we need somebody in the hood for something, hey, we can bring them this. Why you think they say, hey, give, we give y'all $10,000, y'all catch this person. You can be compromised. You can be bought. And yeah, when you when you down on your luck and you ain't got nothing and $10,000 sound good and you know who did the... You know who did the robbery? You know who did the, you know who set up Jimmy John? You know who <laughs> come on man, you you know to some people ten thousand dollars might be the lick. Just to some people, it might be the lick. Let me play the rest of this for y'all. Was there any sign of bad blood before your son's life was taken and before Anthony was killed? Or was there any tension there that you knew of? Not, not with Juve, not with Chris, but um, you know, you heard things about him and um, Anthony getting into like altercations about uh, disputes about money over, over certain situations. And they got in a fight prior to that. And they said, like, you know, the story that they say um, Sack beat him up and knocked his goals out in front of his girlfriend and like two days later I think that's when the incident happened. Chris I know that something that has to be really hard about this is the fact that there are relatives here relatives of Cortland Henry who are also relatives of the victims yes Chris and Cortland share a sister and she's my daughter her and Chris have the same dad which is me and my Cortland share the same mom daughter Melly she's still to this day Okay, this video is for those of you born between 1979 and 1988. In case you missed what just happened, I saw it on the news last night. Courtney shared the same mom. And she took the side so, of Melly. She still to this day. So they, they all Melly. family she members. On Facebook, Instagram. She would go live with free Melly shirts. And they just got her brainwashed with the money. They just showered her with gifts. With so him. your brother. In other words, his daughter is the brother she, of the driver. That was driving with Melly. That was driving with Melly and the other two guys. Her brother. For me to see that daily, her saying that. That's just heartbreaking. Yeah, because his name was Corlin. I haven't talked. We haven't talked. She was living with me up until the time. Because he called himself Bortland. He changed his last name to Bortland. Wind up you, Bortland. Went out separate ways. I haven't talked to her in over two years. So it sounds like you've lost two children. And she's the brother of of the other guy, YNW Things can change with your daughter. So she's a sister. So these are two brothers. They not blood, but they friends. But they share the same sister. Wait till the appeal. He's still innocent. Wait till the appeal. Just have to wait and see. It's going to be a process. This is sick. I know you watched a, a lot of the first day of the trial. This is this is sickening, y'all. We're 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 destroyed, man. The black community is destroyed, bro. Like it's over with. It's over with us, man. When I don't know when we ever gonna you know get it together, man. You know, money always plays a big, huge part and things 
always, always plays a big, huge part. We always, you know, like I said, man, backstab each other for some bread and, and that ain't cool. That is just not cool to do. I couldn't backstab my brothers for no money, man. You know, but like he said, the other dude, Sack Chaser, had a fight with Melly. You know what I'm saying? It's always some behind the scenes stuff. Y'all just gotta listen. Everybody seen his free YNW Melly, but Man, it's your friend, though. Y'all supposed to fight. Y'all supposed to have a disagreement. He's supposed to kick your ass when you're out of line. This is your friend, man. He ain't fighting you and picking on you because you know, you know, you know, punk, you know, you know what I'm saying? He ain't doing that. Well, you a cow. He think you a cow. You know what I'm saying? He doing that because he's trying to put your ass back in your place. Excuse me, y'all. I'll let you know. But anyway. Put your ass back in. Put your ass back in your place. That's what he's supposed to do. Friends gonna fall out. You're gonna fight, man. You know, at least they not, they, you know, and they fighting over stupid stuff. They fighting over money. You know, you're not supposed to fight over money and you're not supposed to fight over a woman, man. Those are two things you're not supposed to fight over. You know what I'm saying? So, really, you ain't got really nothing to fight over then. <laughs> Cause then the only two things really me and be fighting about sports. Uh, some people do get serious when it, that sports stuff, but like I say, usually sometimes it involves money. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it involves a bet, or you know, a lot of men don't throw hands over sports. You know, they're not killing each other because they over a game. You know, you get what I'm saying? No, 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 it ain't gonna be like that. No, no, that don't, that don't, that don't usually happen. You know what I'm saying? It can get deep. You know, some people can. People can get deep on you, but these niggas is just these niggas are whacking each other like it's nothing nowadays. Like it's nothing, man. I believe. Okay, this is what I this is what I believe. I think the niggas should go to jail. You know, city get the death penalty. That ain't up to me. You know what I'm saying? That's up to the Lord. That ain't up to me. Lord gives life and he takes life. Ain't up to me. It ain't up to the state of Florida. It's up to the Lord. You know what I'm saying? But I do think he should spend the rest of his life in jail. I do think he needs to go in the psych eval because it don't look like he's taking none of this serious. You see, he's smiling and you're not taking this serious. You're not showing no remorse as they talking about it. You're not even crying about it. Or is it that these young niggas is that cold, man? That they don't feel anything in their soul. You know why? Because there's no God in them. They're not, they're not being taught anything no more. You know, once they start taking the religion away, and the morals and the values, you know what I'm saying? Why? Because for one, these pastors, y'all played into the devil's hand. Because y'all stopped thinking y'all was bigger than life, started thinking, hey, y'all can sleep with these women, mess with these boys, these little girls. Y'all thought y'all could get away with that. So then now, God said, okay, well, let me pull the mask off you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the devil is all up in here. The devil got these priests and these preachers and these Baptist folks and all kind of folks doing all kind of things up here. So let me show y'all what's going on. So now this puts doubt in people's mind about church. I don't want to go to church. The pastor dirty. He steals money. He does this. You know, the pastor got allegations or the deacon or, or, the, or, the, or the director of the choir or any, any of these folks. So you kind of like, ah, uh, and, and it kind of steal young people away because young people don't see a change. They don't believe. That's because of what the older folks begin to start doing. You know what I'm saying? They begin to start mocking church. You know what I'm saying? Making church a joke. You know what I'm saying? Got people thinking, hey, you put money in the church, you're going to get rich. You're going to be well off. There's some people that's been tied all their life and in more debt than anybody on this earth. And guess who it is? It's mainly black people. Black people got two, three hundred dollars to give the pastor. Because they think they're going to get three hundred thousand dollars from God. Lights get cut off. You can't call pastor 
to give you a $300 back. Why don't y'all do that? But y'all be on the phone with your cousins, your aunties, your uncles. Hey, man, you know, uh, that money you borrowed from me, man, I need it back. I need it ASAP, man. You owe me. Why don't you call uh, Reverend Rinky then and say, hey, man, look, I need that 300 back. I tied to you. My lights getting cut off. Hey, can the church help me keep my light bill paid? Church don't call for no money. You know what they do? They get in a, they, they get in a contract with them government assistant people, and you can come there to the church and apply for government assistance because the church ain't giving you a damn thing. Don't y'all see what the what? Don't y'all see what's going on? Don't y'all see why these young folks are acting so demonic? Why they? Because the, the spirits that we put out here. I'm not perfect, even me, even what I go through. You know what I'm saying? I go through a lot of stuff. You know what I'm saying? I'm going through some things. These spirits out here, man, it's really, it's real, it's powerful. You know? But what keeps me going is that I fear God, man. So there are lines I'm not gonna cross because I fear God. These kids don't fear no God. They have no God to fear, man. They don't know to fear God. So they cross these lines. That's why they die so young. Reason why a lot of us still living because we don't cross certain lines. We know better. Let me say we knew better than to cross them damn lines. We did, we kinda knew not to. We kind of knew not to cross those lines. That's what they call. That's why they say people are habitual line steppers. Cause people will, people will step over them lines and step right all on you, man. These kids have no fear of any god. They don't fear no god because no god has been taught to them. Nothing has been taught to them anymore. Like it was taught to us. People say, well, that the slave master used that to keep us in line. Yes. The devil always used something that God's create for his benefit. Of course. He's doing it now. Everything is for the devil's benefit. Okay, the church, for example. Well, I'm, the devil said, well, I'm gonna use these pastors for my benefit. Yeah, yeah they're gonna do what I say do. Yeah, they can preach, they can talk all this, whatever. Huh. But I'm the God they're gonna serve. I'm the Jesus, the fake Jesus that they're gonna that they're gonna serve me. They're not gonna serve the real Jesus. So I'm gonna have them say, I'm gonna have them do, I'm gonna have them talk a certain way to make it seem like it's coming from God. To make it seem like they're doing God's work. You know, all you gotta do is just take few a few scriptures out the Bible, quote them to some people. And they're going to believe you know the Bible. They're going to say, oh, he's smart. He's a great pastor. Because you just took one or two scriptures and said, and, and notice and focus on what they're talking about, y'all. Prosperity. Almost every sermon is prosperity. Most of it ain't what your pain is, what you're going through in life. Some of it is. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, they play on that just so they can get money. It's going to be all right. God says this. Okay. Right. We know what God say. You know what I'm saying? Some of us really know what God's saying to do. And we just ain't doing it. And a lot of us has been misdirected. But let me keep going. I know you watched a lot of the first day of the trial. How did you feel it was going so far? And, and have you watched today as well? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I think it's going pretty good. It's just a long process. Just got to trust the process on how. Uh, and I think she's doing a good job. I think once the ballistic forensics, the cell phone, and when they showed that Chris got shot on his left cheek, uh, and Chris, he got shot from this side of the car, his left cheek, with, with stifling on his face and the uh, burn marks on his face from the gun muzzle, all that's going to point in one direction to that guy that was sitting in the back driver's, passenger side, back driver's side. 
And the, Christine Bradley, the prosecutor, had said yesterday that the, the medical examiner is going to testify that before the shots were fired into the vehicle, that your son and Anthony, they were already dead. And they, yes. when those shots went into the vehicle, they had already been shot and the fatal thoughts, shots came from the back seat. And that's the testimony that's expected. Yes, ma'am. My understanding, yes, the, the shot that Chris left cheek was the fatal shot that took him out. And then when he staged the drive by, the shots from the back, they could tell by the way Chris' body was slung over and how, like, it was staged after the fact. Yeah, I guess that's going to come out. I can't wait. That's going to be like, breaking news. And with Chris, Chris wasn't, wasn't killed in the drive by. I know that for a fact. One thing that Christine Bradley said yesterday was that. In the days leading up to this, Melly was learning the oath of loyalty to the G Shine blood set to a gang. Did you know anything about that? Had your son ever discussed anything with you about this this gang that Melly was allegedly becoming a part of? something he was doing in his uh, private life on his own, separate from Kristen. And, she, and Christine or, or the lawyers was always saying that Chris lived in the Mir in Miramar. Chris never lived down there. He lived in Gifford. He lived in Gifford, Florida. He might go down there for a day or two, but he always had the same address, same house, same everything. Up until his time of passing. Well, I wanted to play some clips uh, from the trial so far. And Chris, I want to get your, your feelings on some of what was said in opening statements. This is Christine Bradley, the assistant state attorney, um, talking about what amounts to possibly a confession in this case. So in summary, the last thing I want to admit, I'm telling you that the evidence will show is that in the Instagram, because the defendant had a moderate social media following at the time of these events, confession to me like what she said if you take everything into context it sounds like he was speaking on the incident that happened and he admitted to doing it and said Shh, don't say anything about it that's how i took it what is it sounds like there's going to be some cell phone evidence presented in this case some other things oh any yeah now with that situation you know 
he could have been he could have been referring to that particular situation you know it is i don't know it's kind of hard to tell y'all tell me what y'all think you know it's kind of hard for me to tell but i think he did i i think he uh I think he, I think he did something. I think he, he was a part of it. You know the person that did it, but I don't think he's totally innocent. You know what I'm saying? Just let me put it to you like that. You know, if he didn't do it, he's definitely not totally innocent. He had his hand in that. You know what I'm saying? I think he was a part of it. For one, you know, you wasn't with your guy when he went to the hospital. They said you got out and left, Melly. That's what they said. So really, you didn't go report the crime that you was in a drive-by, your friend did, and just said, hey, I was, was in a drive-by. You supposed to go with him. So it does make it look like you got something to hide, you know. You know, when you got two dead bodies, you got to go in there and say something. You can't, what you gonna do? Y'all both supposed to be in there saying, hey, look, why, da, 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 da. Melly probably said, well, let me out. You know, you tell me everything, but they what you tell them. And that's what we ride with. Because I believe if they had both of them, and they asked both what would happen at the same, at simultaneously at the same time, you know, like they do in the in first 48, they got one dude in another room, one dude in another room. I believe they would have probably told two different stories, to be honest. To be honest with you, I think they would have told two different stories. I think they would have had them caught up right then and there. You know, because I don't believe they had their story straight that night. You know. come back you can say man yeah I said this and I told him that and blah 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 so when they come ask you what well, 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 went down you can say well yeah man you know this happened blah, blah. you could almost say the same thing you know so that's what I believe I could be wrong y'all y'all let me know what y'all think about this man but I think that nigga should go to jail I think I, I think he should be locked away I do I believe that nigga need a, need a psychopath that brother is sick, man. Y'all laughing. Y'all think it's a game, but that brother is sick. He needs help, man. And it's all because of some money. That's all we know how to do. And, you know, and before I get out of here, man, before I end this, right, I want to talk about these. He's trending right now in the algorithm. So let me just say this. I don't think he's, I think he's wrong how he handled the business. That's what I will say as far as it's going to go with me. He handled that business wrong. And, and you know what, man? He has a right to make a decision for what's best for him. You know, see, all these corporations, including the black ones, they got this white supremacy system that they adopted and they use it. You know, it's kind of like, let the black man use the system to hold each other down. Yeah, the system worked for us in that way trying to keep each other down when we try to stop each other from making money yeah the system worked perfect for us because we do all kind of legal stuff illegal stuff backstabbing back doing we do all kind of stuff yeah the system works for us in that way right when it comes to being shyster they got all these fancy laws legal terms and all this stuff yeah when it's time to get back though the law works so just think about that but he ain't wrong, man. Y'all leave that man alone, man. Let that man do him. You know, Surf made a comment on him. He's right. 
you know, hey, if that's what Sir believed in his heart, that he was always going, you know, he used him as a pawn, and, you know, he always knew, you know, easy could stand on his own, so be it. Who are you and I to judge that? You know, you trying to make a dollar just like everybody else. A lot of us don't listen to another nigga. A lot of us join things just to, you know, fulfill our own agenda. Everybody has one, so we gotta stop pretending like nobody has an agenda. There are some people who don't know the way to go, don't have direction. But everybody else, we gotta stop acting like everybody else don't have an agenda. So with that being said, man, like I say, man, it's gonna be more videos like this, I'm back. I'm gonna be in full effect once more. You know, like, share, subscribe. If you don't, you don't. Much love to y'all. Peace. I'm out. Bye-bye.